So today we're going to be drawing trees. So as I suggested, I'm going to be using a full set of pencils to start off with. Here we are. In case you haven't been through this with me, I always like to show you that there's a range of pencils and they have all these numbers and letters on them. Very simply, there's going to be a letter H or a letter B. Letter H means hard, letter B means black. So the higher the number, the more or the harder it is or the blacker it is. So a 2B compared to a 6B, if you want something darker and softer, you're gonna go with the 6B. But if you want it a little bit harder and lighter, you're gonna go with the 2B. So that's the one I'm gonna to suggest to start these sketches. If you have an HB or a 2B pencil or just a regular number two pencil, what I wanna start with is, this is just sketching paper. What I wanna do is just introduce you to drawing a tree. One exercise that I really want you to focus on today if you haven't done this before, would be your grip. Now, I'm gonna show you this grip, which is the underhand, underhand grip, where we're going to place the pencil on our index finger, and then our middle finger, and just hold it with the thumb. Let me do that again. So your index finger, middle finger, and it depends on how short or how long you wanna hold the pencil, and then you use your thumb to just lightly press. and. I want you to, if you feel like you're struggling, no, I can't do this, to stick with it. Arrange your posture, make sure you're getting the full range of motion, so it's gonna come from your fingers, but more your wrist and your elbow. And look how I can cover the entire page. So our first drawing is going to be, in this page, I'm about, I'm gonna draw about seven or eight, maybe nine trees. And if I ask you to draw a tree, what would you do? I could start with a circle. So go ahead and follow along. Just draw a circle. Notice that it's very loose. I want you to feel like you're really just sketching. And I could just go ahead and do the trunk. Now, notice the quality of lines. It's not straight. They're not drawn with a ruler. But I could make these really clean, really straight. And if I want to go a little bit further, I'm going to add just a couple more lines. And in this case, they're a little more diagonal. I'm going to switch over to a little darker pencil uh, for you guys to see it a little bit easier. So I'm going to go to a 5B. So I started off with just a plain circle. A few lines. And there we have it. The idea of a tree. Well, let's give it a little bit of ground and usually we would put a little bit of grass so this is a nice simplified version of a tree now compared to what I have on screen we're a little bit far from it but we're gonna work our way up there let's go to the next one if I have a circle let me go ahead and try an oval so what we're doing here is basically testing our grip loosening up so I'm gonna do an oval and I could begin to play with the line a little bit, just break it, make it a little squigglier. Notice that I'm not just drawing my line, but I'm twisting, rotating the pencil in my fingers, giving the line a little bit of thinness or thickness. Also, I could lift the pencil higher, more perpendicular, or lay it flatter to the paper, where I'm gonna get thicker, more shadier lines, or fine hair, thin type of lines as well. And let's go ahead and give this a trunk. Now I'm gonna zigzag it this time. So what I want you to do is just play around and starting with simplified shapes, we could actually do a lot in terms of conceptualizing, getting the idea of a tree. Let's go one step further, right over here. This one's gonna be a little bit smaller. So from a circle to an oval, I'm gonna go to sort of a slice straight with a semicircle on top. Now we're starting with very simple, very simplified shapes. And all I could do is give it a trunk. And some of you may be saying, well, actually that looks like a mushroom. Well, if I add a few branches and how I begin to rotate my pencil, and I could take those all the way to the edges. So these 
wait a minute, these look a little more like cartoonish kind of trees. I want to draw a serious tree. We're working our way up there. I want you to understand, first of all, how simplified the work can be in order for you to work the elements that we're going to be begin to um, to throw in. Move this just a little bit. And let's go ahead and back to, actually, next one is going to be a triangle. But this time, I'm going to break the triangle. So instead of drawing a straight line triangle, which would almost give us that cartoonish, almost Christmas tree look, I'm going to break the line and kind of zigzag it. So it's in the shape of a triangle. But I'm actually just zigzagging the line, kind of going in and out. And already I begin to get a little bit of a better, oh, okay, now this makes sense. And I'm just going to make a couple of dashes in here. What other qualities do you think you can give for texture? And I'm going to just draw a few straight lines. Maintaining my grip, that's going to be the key. How do I manage the directions and the breaks of these lines as I handle my grip? Let's go ahead and do one more here. Uh, this one's interesting. I'm going to start at the center and I'm just going to spiral. Spiral my way bigger and make it a little not so geometric. So I'm kind of oh, breaking away from the perfect circle and almost overlapping some of those lines. And then I'm going to bring a few lines in. There's my trunk. And I'm going to throw a few lines right through the center as well. Kind of develop something like a tree there. There's one more. Going back to the triangle, I'm going to start with the trunk first. So I'm just, I could actually do just a little tiny rectangle, a few lines through it, not looking for much texture. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start throwing lines in both directions. And you almost want to kind of zigzag them as they get thinner or smaller. And I'm actually going in the same direction. I could actually just go in one direction first and the opposite direction, shifting a, a little bit my wrist. So now I have an over grip and just adding lines. So nice, beautiful sketches for trees. It could be as simple as this. Now, if I want to draw every single, let's do one more, every single leaf or branch, that's where we get a little bit complicated, a little bit more complex. So follow me with this one. I'm going to do a little bit of a, not such a straight trunk. It has a little bit of a curve. And then I'm going to follow it up as it gets thin. And this one, I'm going to break it into two thirds, a little more horizontal and a little bigger. And I'm going to add one, two, one, two, one, two, kind of fractals. So if I add one, the other one gets smaller. And it almost repeats the overall shape of the whole thing. So one, two, I could add one more here and even a smaller one right there. And as we get closer to the top, they get thinner and smaller. And you could repeat that over and over. One, two. As you add more and more branches. And we could even add a few leaves if we wanted to. So look at these. I'm just adding squiggly, almost kind of wannabe circles. And how many of these? How, how far I want to take this? Well, that's going to be up to every single one of us. How much detail? How much line work and what kind of in the spectrum of symbol cartoonish all the way to hyper realistic or almost photorealistic trees do i want to draw a few what is that three seven seven trees and i'm going to have you do one last one out of your mind imagine it a tree that you absolutely love what does it look like i'm going to give you a few a little bit of a head start and I'm gonna go ahead and do mine 
And what is the tree that you usually would or regularly would draw? So I'm going to think of something here where I'm actually going to draw the shape. Kind of a leaf. And hey, that doesn't look like a tree. That almost looks more like a leaf. And in a way, that's kind of what I go for here. How the tree and the leaf and all the parts almost, they're all connected. And a little more shadow here and just a little bit of that. And there we have it. There's my eighth tree. So a quick, a quick sketch through and just showing you how easy and simplified this type of sketching can be. Before I move over to, I'm just going to go ahead and flip this page over and kind of revisit a few of the things that some of you may have seen before. And I want to go over types of lines. So I'm going to do a few samples. So we have hatching. Oh. Sorry, give me one second. And it's getting close, zooming in. There we are. So just a few tips. We have hatching, which means lines that are following almost the same direction. And you're going to pay attention to the speed or the pace, obviously the direction. So keywords are going to be direction. In this case, they're diagonal, somewhat diagonal. You're going to maintain direction the space between the lines, the pace, whether it's a little bit slower or faster, the length of the line, meaning they could be short or they could be way longer, even longer than this. We could go from hatch to what, I, what we know as cross hatch. So all I'm doing is coming across this line just a little bit of a different angle. Not straight across, but just enough of a difference to create what's called a cross hatch. Now, this is going to come in handy and we're going to use it a lot. Now, if I were to go at a higher degree, a bigger difference of angle, you're going to have more, you see sort of, of a, something that's becoming more of a grid. So the more subtle you make the angle of a cross hatch, where you're almost overlapping the lines, the better textures you're going to create. There's one more type of line that I want to show you, and that's scumbling. Scumbling starts with a continuous line, and it just wobbles, moves up, down, left, right, circular almost in a way, and it just literally scumbles all, all the way through. Now, notice that as I scumble through here, when I finish, I almost have like a tree trunk or the texture of it. And when I combine scumbling with maybe a little bit of hatch or cross hatch here and there, I begin to create all these beautiful textures that kind of begin to give us, oh, look at that, the tree. Now, I want to show you something else. Don't take it from me. Take it from... Rembrandt. So this is an image, a drawing of a tree. Actually, this one's in ink, and it's more of an etching. But if you look at all the types of lines, do you recognize any patterns? Can you see the horizontal hatching? Can you see some of the hatching up in the trees, the pattern and the directional? And then how it, on the edges, it becomes a little bit of scumbling. Notice also how there's a little bit of light or there's more saturation in some of them. And that is how we're going to handle it, just by combining lines. So what I want to do next is get to our first drawing. And that drawing is going to be, I'm going to use this drawing paper. Now, if you're using your sketchbook, that's always the best place to, to do it. I'm going to use this. It's more of a color pencil. It's actually also used for printmaking, but I'm going to use it for drawing. It's it's really nice. It has cotton in it. And for the things I want to show you today, I'm actually going to divide this 9 by 12 page into four. So I'm going to have four smaller 
drawings of trees. And that's my goal today, to hopefully get through four drawings. So I could use a ruler and just to give myself a little bit of a, an idea for proportions, how big each one of these trees is going to be, I'm going to give myself a guide. There we have it. Now I also have, as I mentioned, several pencils and I have ink pens. So I'm going to do a few different variations with pencil and with ink pens. And I'm actually going to zoom this in so you could see it a little bit better as I draw. So let's go to the first one. And that's going to be this rectangle up here. There we are. So starting with my lightest pencil, I'm going to go with an HB, or if you have it, a 2H. So I'm going to start with 2B so you can see it. I want you to look at the screen. I'm going to show you a few things. We have this beautiful tree at the top, and we have a black and white version at the bottom. Now, the, when, I, when you draw a tree and you're drawing it from life, if you squint, you'll see something like this. Can you see the one at the top? Let me do it again. So you're looking at the tree and then you squint. That's what you're going to see. So notice how you take out all the detail. But what do you see when you squint really, really hard? And I'm forcing you to squint because even if you don't squint, it's blurry. What I want you to see there is simplified shapes, the absolute simplest shapes that you can see. The biggest, simplest shapes, but also what is light and what is dark. So there's going to be some shapes of darker um, value and there's going to be shapes of lighter value. So I want you to come with kind of a way of having to see this. And at the bottom, you see the black and white, which is kind of like the answers to the test. There they are. So using your grip, I'm going to start with what is the general shape? We kind of did this earlier. I'm going to squint and pretty much... Is it almost a circle? It, it does. The biggest general shape that I could see, this is kind of my tree. And it actually comes out a little bit down here, if you could see that. And then it kind of gets a little bit taller, then it gets wider. And, my, and actually, my tree, the leaves go fall under, and this is tiny. Almost at the same level of this side here. So notice how I'm basically adding the structure, kind of like those early sketches. I'm going to start with the absolute simplest form or simplest shape. And now that I have the simplest shape, I can go in and around the edges, avoiding the detail. But I'm going to see some of those. Remember how we did one of those where we come in and break the line and kind of break the circle? We did it with the triangle. So I'm beginning to see some dents in the circle. Some of them are bigger, but I still don't apply what we would generally think of as detail. Getting caught up in all the, every single leaf, every single branch, but more on the biggest, simplest, generic, easiest to read shapes that we see. So I see a little bit of rounding with, as you can see, our clusters. So now my circle became closer to the actual shape that I was looking for. And where I where would I go next? Actually, I want to add a little bit of the space between this and that horizon line and a little bit of that shadow, which is going to give our tree the illusion of three-dimensionality. So just a little bit of kind of placing it in space. There's a little bit of a hill back there. So see, I'm starting to move into that detail where it's which is what I want you to avoid. I want you to stay in a mindset of sketching, 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 sketching all the way through and never really getting into detail. So think Rembrandt. So what Rembrandt did here is squint. Do you see any shapes in within this shape that are as just stand out? They're the biggest, simplest shapes. I see one. If I can make it out, it kind of starts over here and then it breaks this and it's darker. 
and it creates sort of a clump. So now I'm almost thinking, huh, this is going to look more like broccoli. There's a little space between this one and this one. And I want to be soft with some of these lines because this is not going to be the end of it. This is just me loosely setting up overlap, simplified shapes. But I'm, I'm drawing the things that I actually see. So in order to see these shapes, you have to look at your subject. The longer you look at your subject, meaning the longer you look at the image of the tree and not at your paper, the better. Test it out. See how long you can go without looking at your paper. At first you're like, oh no, I'm going to be drawing over here on this side. No, nope. take just one quick little one second peek just to make sure the pencil is where you think it is. But all the lines, actually your lines get even better and better and more interesting. So I have a 2B pencil. We want to start big and simple and light. And little by little, we're going to get smaller, more complex, and darker. So I'm going to go ahead and begin to add some of that hatching pattern. And look, this one's almost a zigzag. I'm going to add it in here. I'm going to add it at the bottom of this shape here. I'm going to add it right underneath. So I'm doing what usually would be considered the hatch. It's not a cross hatch. It's just a parallel diagonal. In this case, I'm making it more vertical. And you can do that. But why am I choosing these areas? I'm squinting. I'm really, really squinting through my eyelashes in order to see what's lightest, what is darkest. And look at this. I'm actually coming over some of these areas where it actually is medium dark and then even darker. So I'm going to double it up. But I want to make good, efficient reads. Some of my lines, yes, I want them to be a little more, a little finer. So this hatch, I'm making it vertical. And you're going to get smaller, smaller, and more detailed. And I will switch. So as I do my read of light, you'll see what comes next. So as I read, confirm, and just see what's happening with all these breaks, all these shapes because that, that's, that's all they are. Overlapping, simplified shapes that our mind reads as tree. Definitely not a piece of broccoli. So as I add more hatch, look, we are at a stage where, aha, uh -huh, actually, yep, it starts looking like a tree. But I could do even better. So we went from biggest, simplest, lightest, to smaller, more complex. So we go even smaller and more complex. But what I don't want you to do is stay in one little part and work it all the way until done, finished. I want you to do step by step, sketching through. So from the hatch, you're going to begin to see me almost scumble. So notice my grip, same grip. And I'm just grabbing a little shorter. And now I'm just squiggling my eyes believe it or not, are 100% on my picture, on my reference. And I'm just letting this line go wherever it goes. So this time I'm actually, yep, I'm trying to draw every single leaf, every single break. Now, if it gets lighter, I'll lighten my, my mark. If it gets darker, I'll put a little more pressure. Or I'll stay there a little bit longer. Some of them I'll just go right through. And it hints at that lighter. But see, now it begins to shape up as the line gets more complex, as it gets a little bit darker. And some of us may say, well, more precise. Well, this is as imprecise as possible. I'm not even looking. And when you develop that confidence of, look at this. I don't even take my eyes off of my subject. And I still can draw and render thousands and thousands and thousands of little leaves and you can go all over 
just taking one quick little glimpse. So I think those are the keys. If you trust yourself more and more and more with how you see and don't force. So now I'm going to do instead of scumbling, what you want to do with the scumbling and it actually it's one of my favorite lines. I think it's it says the things how I want them to be said. It's the kind of line that says the things that I feel are the way they should be said. It doesn't scream, but it's not whispering, but kind of. And it has a lot of information. It's very eloquent. So your lines could be very eloquent. And they don't have to be so rigid, so complicated so stiff that they lose kind of that beauty and notice all the way through just squiggly scumbly but because in the end the key is I'm connected to my subject I'm almost feeling it almost like reaching my hand out and touching the area that I'm trying to draw as if the pencil were my fingers and I'm literally just reaching out and touching it so we make a couple of different types of marks now I'm going to add a little bit of shadow that I see right under our tree here so it's gonna get a little darker so I'm gonna lay the pencil a little flatter and I'm gonna give it a little bit of light a little bit of break of light and more shadow right underneath. And these are all little tips, tricks, techniques that you just, the more and more and more you do it, the more and more you become comfortable to develop new types of lines, new ways of rendering, and eventually your style. And what your style the way you develop a style is just by doing it. There's no way anyone else can develop. Your style is you. The way you see, the way you hold the pencil, has that's technique. But the way you look at a tree, how you see the things in that tree, it has a lot to do with what people call style. In many, many ways, it's more the style of looking. And there it is. That's our first tree. So I hope these techniques of blurring, squinting, seeing the light and shadow first, biggest shapes first, are helpful. If I'm working a little fast or slow, take your time. I did email this, these images so you can work at your own pace. But I am going to go to image number two. There we are. So this one, your choice, pencil, pen, I'm going to go with ink pens. So I have a variety of ink pens and I have these, these microns, a set of different um, gauges. So this is a 08, 05, 03, 0201, a 005. And those are the pens that I'm going to be using for the next drawing. So let's go ahead and move this over, right over here. And right there. Okay. So, what do I do? What do I start with? Usually we start with biggest. My recommendation, always, look for the biggest, simplest shape. Now, do I need a pencil line and then go over the ink line? Well, you'll be, do you'll be doing double the work. So I would say trust it. Now, if you don't feel confident, go ahead and use the lightest pencil, like an HB or a B or even a 2H, and kind of give yourself a little grit. So notice here I'm looking at what it looks like, just a triangle that kind of curves at the bottom. And that's it. So just for proportion and size, I have an idea where to put my ink pen. Because with ink pens, we're a little more nervous about 
oh no, once I put it down, it's over. That is it. So here, I want you to look closer at the elements. So don't get caught up in the little things. Start with biggest. Now for pens, ink pens, do I use the same grip? Pens behave differently because they don't have that type of range. So here I hold, oh, notice that I hold it longer, but I use the overhand grip just very close to what we were using before. But you may see it as it almost looks more like a writing grip. So what I'm trying to get you to do is don't, instead of writing, draw. So when you hold your pen or pencil like this, you're holding it for writing, not for drawing. So I want you to hold it for drawing. And even if you modify a little bit, making it shorter, make sure you're drawing, not writing, when you're attempting to draw. So here we are. And just see how it goes in terms of what kind of lines the grip, the way you're holding it, what kind of lines you can you deliver. So here I'm going with the simplest shape. And I want you to feel all the way through this entire session it's all about sketching oh no but I thought we were gonna draw trees but mindset all the way through I want you to feel like you're sketching think about that Rembrandt that I showed you that hangs in a museum not just any museum but all over the world the best museums when you see that you can see his mindset was sketching he wasn't thinking, wow, I'm going to create this beautiful masterpiece that's going to be perfect. And every line needs to be made, you know, all those things. In the mind, he was just, oh, look at this beautiful tree. What kind of lines, what kind of techniques can I use here? And obviously, notice all of this space. So I'm going to go to the center. And what I see in between, which is going to be my darkest. Now, I am also using the biggest pen I have, 08. So I'm going to start with the biggest, thickest pen. And I'm working work my way to smaller, lighter lines. And I'm going to go all the way to the tippy tippy top there. And these lines, I'm going to use a little bit of hatch and scumble. But mostly scumble. Notice here. As I try to darken the area, I'm not just coloring it in. I'm adding a little bit of that look, the texture. There's a second one here. It almost looks like there's two or three in there. So I'm going to add and squinting. What do I do next? How do I do it? Squinting will give you the answers. And from there, I'm going to have lots of dark here. Now, one key word that I mentioned early on direction if this tree has this kind of shape that line has to match that direction if I start doing hatching this way you're gonna change the whole look of it because the hatch should be maybe this way and that's where we lose it we kind of lose the connection to the, the the subject and we just draw lines where we're not really paying attention to which direction should that be? They're actually coming towards me. Well, imitate, draw the line, draw the direction of that line. And here I'm gonna go more for a scumble look. As I mentioned with that sketch, the closer you look, break it down and simplify how it is because I say you think you see it. Sometimes we think we see a thing, but we haven't really looked closely. And then we can be surprised. So simplifying just the direction and then realizing that, oh, well, look at that. It comes together. Those are the techniques, the tricks that magicians use. And as a magician, once you know how the trick is done, it's not the same. So when you draw these lines, you're going to realize, well, I am using tricks. The trick is using the direction. And I could actually begin to add these first, where I see the biggest, and then develop it from there. So once again, squinting, and I'm looking for that major, which is still not the biggest, but going from biggest to smallest, 
these are way bigger than all these tiny ones. So if you notice what I'm trying to do here is look for kind of the structure, the skeleton. But I am looking closely. One other thing, and I'll say it again and again, keeping your eyes on your subject and trusting what you see. It is the absolute key. When you feel so confident and you trust your hand to deliver the lines that you're seeing. But the key is, what are you seeing? Sometimes we don't even look. We keep our eyes on the paper, on this paper here, never at our subject. And what I call that is making up information. So when you make up information, you'll have something, but it's not going to look like the thing. You'll be lucky if it does. And then, not that there's anything wrong with that. But if your expectation is, I want it to look like this one, well, then you have to look at it and really look as closely as you can. Notice the line's getting smaller. But already I have something that I can live with. Yeah, there it is. Now, this is going to get following the rules. And I say rules. They're more like tips to make it a little bit easier. Biggest to smallest. We're going to get a little bit smaller. So where do I start? It gets really, really dark. So the photo, the image is here in this area, really, really dark. And at the edges, we see a couple of breaks of light. So I want to make sure I scumble that in. And my decision here, should I use more hatching? Meaning this type of line, which follows the direction all the way through? Or should I use more scumbling? Which would be something more like this. Maybe a little more zigzaggy. And that is where I'm going to make a big decision. Which one do I think looks better for this, for this subject? And you may agree with me. Oh, I think it's this one. No, it's that one. Well, you get to make the call on your drawing. Every single line, you decided which type of line am I going to go with. And when we look at your drawing, we will all be able to tell, haha, I see what technique, what trick he, he or she used here and there. And we could also tell how close you were looking if you were looking at your subject or when you took your eyes off of it we could also tell how we could tell how much you love pine trees or not really and that kind of shows also in how much patience maybe we have and I'm already losing a little bit of patience here because it may take a little longer with the ink Ink drawings usually take a little more patience. So in order for us to get through the four drawings that I want to get us through today, I'm going to speed this up just a little bit. And not that I would want you to. Take your time. But this does take a little bit of that kind of developing and building up the ink. As we get more and more complex, the lines get a little bit slower. They get smaller. They get more specific. They cross, you can see things in the back. You can see how it gets lighter and darker, breaks of light right in between, but it begins to work. Now I should be switching my pen here. As I get smaller, my pen is developing somewhat of a thick line here still. So it might get a little too saturated for these smaller areas. So here's where I would suggest, yep, switch to a smaller pen. Now that also will slow you down in terms of coverage. It'll take a little longer to cover an area, but the payoff, that's where you see it. It's worth it. 
And not just because a drawing takes a lot longer, it means it's better. You just have to give the love and care. to each every single one of the lines in order to get that look that you're trying to achieve. So there's 30 second drawings that are unbelievable and amazing and some that take two weeks. It's up to you. But looking for that quality, actually, I like it a lot. And that, would, that got a little bit faster, but you could see where I was going with this. And I could kind of come over in some areas and cross hatch, take a little bit of a closer look and develop a little more contrast a little more space, a little more light and shadow between the branches, and a little more specific, tiny little, even all the way up top, tiny little ones, which will give you even just a little more accuracy. So there we have it. That was tree number two. For number three, I selected this one and I chose something that I wanted I just wanted to add one layer which is this so whether it's ink or pencil instead of adding a black and white photo what I did is I created levels of contrast so here you have light so you see something you see areas that is white you see areas that are gray and you see areas that are black. So if you look for those three things, what areas do I leave white? What areas do I add gray? And what areas do I add black? You're good to go. And you could do this, as I said, with ink or with pencil or with any medium. That is what you're looking for. How the light is behaving with your subject. So light and shadow, this is what you're looking for. So if you could see this, when you're looking at this, once again, my tip for you, squint and train yourself to look for lightest and darkest. So I am gonna go back to pencil. And for this one, I'm going to attempt a complete blind drawing. What does that mean? I am never going to look at my paper. And I'm going to trust, let's see, where's my 284H? I guess I'll go with the 3B. It's a little bit darker and it's going to allow me to create a little bit of blur and a little bit of blending with one of these paper blenders here. So I have these paper blenders. And when I add my lines, I bring in my paper blender and I can create value changes. So a light, a gray, and a black will have the variations that I'm looking for. And I can also bring in erasers or needed eraser to bring out the light once again. And that's something that I maybe want you to test in this one. So what am I going to look for here? As I mentioned, I want to make this a blind drawing. So the outline of it, I'm going to make almost a continuous line starting here at the bottom with the root. What I'm looking for is the negative space in and around the tree. Now this may not look exactly like what you would say, well, how is he the teacher if he's drawing trees like that? But when I say blind drawing, it means 98, 99% of the time, I'm looking at the edge of my subject. So notice that this is the tree trunk. This is the ground. Let me make that a little clear. And yes, I just looked. This would be the tree trunk. And here I begin to see all these little leaves breaking down, breaking away, but I see the space behind my tree as well. And here, huh, I don't know if that's the background or that's part of the tree. So guess what? I improvise, I get creative, I make it my own. And if you notice, I have one consistent, I don't lift the pencil, well, even though I just did there, but I start 
and I never lift the pencil. And I'm basically silhouetting the edge. So going through almost every little leaf, all the way around. Now, when you do this, the slower you go, the better your lines are going to be. And notice that my lines are sort of scumble. So I, you don't see it much, but I'm spinning, rotating the pencil on my fingers as I feel. And this is the thing where I was mentioning before. I'm actually there touching with my fingers. So my eyes are my fingers. And as I move through every single little leaf, it feels like I'm actually touching the shape of it and just following it. And what my pencil does is it just copies it down on the paper. So I'm, I'm seeing the leaf coming towards me, right of me, left of me, away from me. And I'm just with the rotation and the pencil mark trying to capture that in space. The mistake here with this type of drawing is your eyes move way faster and your hand tries to catch up and what you end up with is not the quality of line that you're looking for. This to me is, okay, look, he is looking. I'm sure most of you can actually tell where I am. And yes, I did look again to put that pencil back in the right spot and I am glancing less than a second down at it every about 10 12 seconds or even longer just to make sure i don't run out of the page and kind of maintain a little bit of proportion close to it it's not perfect but it is a beautiful way and by the way the way masters did this they had so much confidence so much trust in what they saw and their hands delivering those lines that everything you see them do they were fixated on the subject keeping their eyes where they need to be in order to see because what is it what are we doing today just another exercise in observation oh i thought we were drawing well we're drawing so you can show us how well can you see not even see how well can you observe a thing and that thing could be anything in this case it happens to be a tree now usually this is where we lose it how you go all the way around and then you end up over here and you were supposed to be here so I follow my proportion but Again, I get, to, I get to be the composer. I get to arrange and make corrections. And that's the shape of the tree that I want. So I have a silhouette. I have a what's called a blind contour, where I never took my eyes off the subject, only glanced at to keep proportion. And now I'm going to make another decision. I'm going to add a little bit of graphite with the same pencil by squinting. And this you should do kind of with the same care, the same patience that you did when you did the contour. Squinting really, really hard and trying to capture the darkest shapes where I see them. And sometimes these shapes are more like lines. So you do your best. So really try to stay faithful to what you see. And if you have to stop and look and study it for a second, look at it, look at it. And is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Look for clues that will actually place you where, okay, yeah, it's right there. And it's that dark. Then you do that. So I have enough graphite here. I'm going to grab my tortillon or paper blender. I'm sorry, pencil blender graphite blender here and I can actually just shape and I'm going to start here and I begin to just blur it so using the same grip I add a little bit of pressure at the tip and I use a, a circular motion it's not just you know straight up and down I want to use sort of a scumbling motion 
in order for this to connect with the layers of line and pencil that I have there, and now it feels like you're painting. But quick question, are you looking at your subject or were you looking at your paper? You're supposed to be looking at your subject and just glancing. But really, really catch yourself. How long are you looking at your subject? How long are your eyes on your own paper? You want it to be a 90 at maximum, 90-10 ratio. 90% of the time on your subject. 10% of the time on your paper. Most of the time, we do it opposite. So I'm going to add a few extra lines on top of this. You know what's another beautiful way of mixing media? You have these beautiful pencil lines with a little bit of graphite blended, and then you could bring in a little bit of ink lines. Now, it throws the look completely off a little bit, so you see how dark the darkest will be. But it's a nice thing you could also do. Mix graphite with ink. I'm going to stick to the pencil. But you could see right there, just that touch of ink, how immediately it pops. But what I want to do is add a little extra dark scumbles here and there with little breaks of light. And the last thing I'm going to do to this, notice that it almost feels like I'm writing, like I'm scribbling. I really want you to see this in this area here. I'm not looking at my paper. I'm looking at my subject and I'm trying to trace all those tree lines and the little leaves, some of the breaks in the shadow. And it doesn't matter where these lines, honestly, it does not matter where they land. Even if they go off, well, then maybe you say, well, what happened here? That's when you take a quick glance and pull it back over, bring it over and keep scumbling. But what I am, my scumbling is really trying to trace over the shape of the leaves or branches or shadows that I'm actually seeing in the drawing, in the subject, in the reference. And at some point, you become meditative. It's very Zen-like, where, whoa, how did I do those lines? Did I even do that? To that level, yes. It feels good when that happens. And the only way to do that is also very Zen. It's giving up control a little bit, almost giving it to the pencil. Like, go ahead, pencil, do your thing. And without me having to really just force the line to the point where my knuckles get white. No, just lose, dance around. I'm going to go ahead and add that shadow, that beautiful shadow we have right here underneath this tree. It gets a little softer back there and right down here. And I'm going to go ahead and blend that again. There's a couple of little breaks of light right in the middle there. And I'm going to go, go ahead and add that little horizon line there that we have. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and scumble a few of those trees back there. And look at the light, look at the shadows, and see how intricate your drawing begins to get. But now we place it in space. And just continue testing and experimenting with all kinds of different techniques. Until you find that, ooh, that look that I love. And then take it to the next level. For our final drawing, I have this beautiful image here. Ha! Huh. Now, you don't have to do all three. You could just pick one of them. And if you haven't done blind drawing, I would encourage you to do it at least one time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick one of them. I'm going to start right here. 
and without pencil trace or just a guide I'm gonna take this right off the edge almost again blind drawing so looking at some of these edges and some of these little shapes that come off of the line here now the thick or thin the thickness or thinness of this is going to be crucial for the proportion so if I make this too thick it's gonna look a little bit different so if I make it a little bit shorter then it should be even thinner so in relationship to the 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 height we want to make sure we keep the thickness maybe just a little bit thinner I'm gonna add a couple of just I know it's it almost looks like well there's no textures no light no sh it, everything's a shadow it's a silhouette well that allows me to just go ahead and play with some of these hatching scumbling marks and really make it my own what kind of line and I just did look at that just horizontal broken parallel hatch and that's what I get and let's see I see a little bit of again looking closely and beginning to get a sense of how I'm going to come up to the top and leave enough room for everything that's gonna happen here where I'm gonna place most of my focus and there's little edges can I do this blind drawing I am now I'm glancing down a little bit more often but it is keeping my eyes on the reference and how comfortable can you become doing that so here we go the way I would do this I would kind of find the what would seem sort of like the center and some of those radial kind of setup compositions I'm just gonna follow them and I'm gonna use again mixture of long hatch with a little bit of somewhat of a scumble and make sure I have that light or those breaks of light in between but I really want to get a sense of gravity the way these things are falling in space in order for me to get that natural I want to find that biggest so the axis and then from there I see they get smaller and also darker so I'll use a little bit of crosshatch to darken that area and some loose lines here and there to capture that character that but not make up any information stop take a little bit of a closer look here where it gets really saturated we generally just kind of bull through it oh just just paint it black all the way through there's a lot of nuance there's there's a lot of things you can do with those look at this this cross hatch that I just did here it gives it way more three-dimensionality way more volume it seems like it's going up but also back and maybe a little bit forward towards us so a little bit of foreshortening there's nice breaks here in space with this one one here and then one single one down there so I'm gonna set up those big shapes or big axis for these respecting the shape or the space in between them so I'm looking a little more at how close or how apart these edges are here and how this one comes almost right over it and then right next to it but not touching it and it also gets a little bit straighter at the end and here once again it tends to get dark but I don't want to just color it in I'm gonna go ahead and break every single line and give it that remember that word the key the direction 
and how sat how saturated it should be. There it is. Now I'm going to leave room for maybe another one. This one's too lonely. So I guess I will do that one for homework. And wow, was this fun. Just like that, we have a full page of beautiful trees. Pencil graphite blurring, making sure we capture those big shapes first. Beginning to work with some of those ink lines, combinations of lines, and maybe in the end with a little bit of color. So I hope you enjoyed it.